In this video, I will be comparing two remote gas canister stoves from the company Fire Maple, the FM118 and the Blade 2. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on these two stoves, keep watching. All right, just a couple things I want to mention before we get started. First, I would like to thank the company Fire Maple for sending me these two stoves so that I could share them with you. And the next thing is, this will be the first in a two-part series on gas canister stoves. This will be a relatively short video comparing these two stoves one against the other. There'll only be one demonstration of the two of them in use simultaneously. And then the next video will cover off the actual practical application of these two stoves. At the same time, I'll be comparing them against another stove from Fire Maple, which is the Polaris gas regulated stove. I will also be providing a number of tips and tricks that you can use with these stoves or any gas stoves for that matter when you're using them in cold weather. All right, let's get started. What I'm going to do is I'll go down to the tabletop. I'll give you some detail of each of these two stoves, show you the differences as well as the similarities, and then we'll do that demonstration. All right, just before we take a closer look at these two stoves, I'll very quickly show you what they came with. Both of these stoves came with operating manuals with the warranty information, of course, one for each of the two models. And they both came with these nice little nylon stuff sacks, which work very well for their intended purpose. Okay, so now on the surface, these two stoves look to be identical. In fact, when Fire Maple suggested that I take both of these stoves at the same time, I wondered what I might say about them. Now, the difference is primarily is that the Fire Maple 118 or FM 118 is made on t entirely from stainless steel, whereas the Fire Maple Blade 2 is made primarily from titanium, but it does have some stainless steel. When I looked at them even closer, I found that they were almost identical in weight, just a half an ounce in the difference. And I thought, well, how much of a benefit is there of buying the titanium one over the stainless steel one? Honestly, not a lot, a little bit of a weight saving. That's about the only benefit I can see between the two of them. Because when I did my testing with these two stoves, the performance is identical. <laughs> it was just strangely identical. They are both the same burners in terms of their design. The difference being, of course, is this one is made in titanium and this one solely in stainless steel. I'll talk more about the testing in a few moments time because what I want to do now is just cover off the specifications for each of these stoves. All right, let's move the blade two off to the side for one moment while I cover the specifications for the FM118. All right, so they're both remote gas canister stoves. There's the attachment for the canisters, and I'll be doing that in a few moments' time for the demonstration. Remote gas canister stoves has some distinct advantages over um, regular uh, canister or upright stoves in that you move the canister away from whatever it is you're using to cook in, pot, kettle, fry pan, whatever, and you get some more stability because the leg are spread out a little bit further. I quite like the concept of a remote gas canister stove. There is another feature of both of these stoves that require that they be remote gas canister stoves, which I'll talk about in one moment. So as I mentioned, this stove is made entirely from stainless steel, and it comes in with a weight of 5.5 ounces, which is 157 grams. And that is on my scales here at home, not the specifications provided by Fire Maple. Again, entirely made from stainless steel. The burner is rated at 2,800 watts, providing 9,500 BTUs performance. Now, I did a boil test on this here in my home, and I'm working in my basement, so it's not that cold. And the temperature here is an ambient temperature of around 14 degrees Celsius. I used two cups of water, and I used the Fire Maple heat exchanger pot to do tests on both stoves. The performance I got from this stove was two cups of water, 500 milliliters that is, two minutes, 13 seconds to a full rolling boil, 
and the stove consumed eight grams of fuel. Keep that in mind just for a minute. Now, the, I bring in the other stove and I'll give you a few, I will be giving you some close-ups of course on this. It looks identical with the exception of where the titanium is. Again, it is a remote gas canister stove. Now, I, I will show you that the attachments are slightly different, but they, they perform identical, so it's just a slight difference. I think this is the newer design of the two stoves. But this stove has titanium burner, titanium pot supports and legs, titanium main shaft of the stove itself, but everything else is stainless steel, including, of course, the braided hose that goes out to the canister. So the specs on this stove are five ounces even, which is 141 grams. That's only half an ounce in the difference. The rated uh, burner specifications are 2,800 watts, providing 9,500 BTUs of energy. The testing I did, again, with this pot, using this stove right here in my basement. Actually, they were done one right after the other. When I did the testing with two cups of water, I got a boil time of, you guessed it, two minutes, 13 seconds with eight grams of fuel being consumed. I couldn't believe how close in performance they were. So what other differences can you see between these two stoves? Well, I had to look hard to figure this out. But and it won't even show from the angle of this camera, but the titanium stove or the blade two is sitting off of the ground by a half an inch. You can't quite see the clearance underneath the bottom of the stove. The FM118 is sitting off of the table by one quarter of an inch. And I, I had to look closely to figure out what the difference was. And it was simple. It's just how far the legs spread out. So the three the tripod legs on the Fire Maple Titanium, the Blade 2, do not spread out quite as far as they do on the FM118. Major difference? Hardly. You know, it, it didn't have perfect, uh, affect performance at all. I wouldn't even consider that a difference worth mentioning, except I was just looking to see what would be different between the two of them. So what is it that makes these stoves special? I'm going to use the titanium one for this discussion because, um, well, it's the one I have right in my hand right now. So these stoves have something that not every stove have, and that is this preheat tube right here, sometimes referred to as a generator. And the value of having this on a stove is for use in cold weather. Now, this is going to be a discussion I'll go into at greater length in the next video. Video, but primarily when the temperature starts to get cold, the old adage is that you cannot use a gas canister stove of any type, and that's simply not true. There are some guidelines for getting better performance out of gas canister stoves during cold weather, and there is some truth to that, and that's based on the fact that butane stops vaporizing at just about the freezing point. So if you're in, as the temperature cools off, you don't even have to be down to freezing, but as the temperature cools off, the butane in your canister will release less and less pressure and you'll get poorer and poorer performance from your regular gas canister stove. Now, isobutane has a, it's a combination of fuels, but it gives more uh, fuel or more pressure to colder temperatures because it the boiling point or the vaporization point goes a little bit lower. Then there's yet another fuel which is known as winter fuel by most companies and it involves isobutane mixed with some propane. And again, I said we'll talk more about this and in the next video. That will take the temperatures even lower. But what happens is in a regular upright canister stove, either the one you mount right on top of the canister or other remote canister stoves that don't have a preheat tube, in cold weather, propane will start to separate from the isobutane in the cylinder and preferentially boil off and leaves you with unburnt uh, butane in the cylinder. So, and not again, it works, but not as well as what I'm going to discuss now. Now, what would be really nice is if you didn't have to rely on the gas in or the fuel in your stove to vaporize in order to use it. Well, in fact, that's why these stoves are designed like this. They can be used in a regular manner with the canister upright, with the attachment on top, 
but they can also be used by inverting the canister upside down. Now, what is the benefit for doing that? Well, when you invert the canister upside down, you're not relying on vaporized gas moving through the tube to get to the stove in order to be burnt. You're actually using liquid fuel, butane, propane, isobutane, whatever the mix is to get to this. Now, it still has to be vaporized when it gets here, but what it does is it passes through this preheat tube first, runs up over here, and bend back down inside the stove and then up and out of the burner. So it takes a minute or two for it to start working but because you have to have a little bit of heat in order to start vaporizing what's in the preheat tube. But you get to use the fuel to, to a much lower temperature. So that's the reason why if you think you want to be using a gas canister stove in cold weather, look for one that has a preheat tube or a generator, different names by different companies. And both of these stoves have them. They both have them. They're identical. For whatever reason, they're at a slightly different angle on the Blade 2 than it is on the FM118. But in my, my testing so far, it has not affected performance. They don't have to be into the flame in order for them to work. In fact, if you put a pot on top, the heat is distributed outwards anyway. One thing I did note for both of these stoves is that they are using a stainless steel tube as opposed to a copper tube, which you will see on a lot of other burners, including the well-known Trangia gas burner that's used to replace the alcohol stove in Trangia systems, cook systems. Okay, so basically that's these two stoves compared one against the other. I guess I could show these in a folded up condition, how I would store them away. The legs all fold in as do the pot stands. And then quickly I can wrap my braided hose around the outside and put it in the bag for transport. Very simple, unfold it, fold the legs out, Fold the pot stands out, attach this to my gas canister, and I'm good to go. Now, the other thing I guess that's good to uh, point out is that these do not come with built-in piezoelectric lighters like many stoves do. So you are going to need a lighter of some type to ignite these stoves. All right, I think we've talked enough about the differences and the similarities, which are more, more so than the differences. Let's set up and I'll show you the flame pattern on both of these stoves in use simultaneously. All right, so I have the two stoves set up on a metal plate that I use for testing things on in the house just in case any heat transfers down. I don't want it transferring into my tabletop right here. Uh, I'll show you the gas that I'm using and then I'm going to be turning the lights off of course. This is a isobutane cylinder that I pick up at our local hardware store uh, Canadian Tire. I picked up a couple of these larger versions for use at home when I'm doing testing like this because of course they're less expensive per gram of fuel. A bit big for carrying, unless you're a car camping, that is. A bit big for carrying in the backpack. I do carry smaller ones when I go out. But for the purposes of testing like this, much more cost effective. So what I'm going to do is light the two stoves at a relatively low pressure. Then I'm going to turn out all the lights here and I'll crank the stoves up just so you can see how well they work. All right, let's get this one going. The one on my left, your right, will be the FM118. So it's going but not hard and I'm going to do the same for the other stove. All right let me turn the lights down here. I don't have them adjusted to a perfect evenness. Let me open this one up a little bit more. But you can see the flame pattern, when I get them adjusted correctly, is pretty much identical. And I can see in the monitor, you can probably see the height difference between the two stoves right now. So that's the height difference I mentioned. Um, for whatever reason, I'm getting a little bit more orange out of the Blade 2 right now. That could be the titanium adding itself to the flames. 
Um, the, here's one thing that we have not talked about. Is there any advantage other than weight to having titanium in your stove over stainless steel? Well, one thing that titanium will do will not do that stainless steel can do, and that is corrode. Stainless steel, especially if it's exposed to high heat a number of times, eventually does allow itself to corrode, not so much corrode, but it will rust. Honestly, I've never had that happen. I don't know how much use you would have to do to make that happen. Maybe living in the elements will cause it to happen. Can't happen with titanium because it just doesn't work like that. Interesting, just, uh, I don't think I did this in the dark before, but I can see how much oranger the flame is on the titanium version. Now, let's just crank them wide open. The color difference is starting to diminish. Still a little bit oranger on the titanium one, but not by much. But you can see they are pretty much identical between the two of them in terms of the heat being delivered. And that's the experience I had in my boil test. Now let's just see if how low we can get them to go. Right now I'm starting to work the FM118 down. That's an important component when you're considering your stove is, is can I simmer with that? Well, that's pretty low right there. Now I'm going to turn the other one down, the blade two. Getting down to a very low flame. And I think that's about as low as I can go for either of them. They would be subject to the wind knocking them out at this point. So if you're really going to do any simmering with a gas canister stove running this low, then uh, you're going to need a windscreen for it. Okay, I think that's a reasonable demonstration of the performance of these two stoves side by side. Let's wrap this video up. All right, a couple closing thoughts on comparing the Fire Maple Blade 2 titanium remote gas canister stove with the Fire Maple FM118 remote gas canister stove. Almost identical in every way, with the exception of the Blade 2 having a, a certain amount, not all of it, but a certain amount made from titanium. It occurs to me that I did not mention there is one other benefit, maybe small, but maybe something that you are interested in, and that is how quickly will the stove cool off after you use it? Well, the titanium one does cool off a bit faster, but you also have to realize it's a bit slower to warm up. So it, you know, it's probably an even trade-off, but yes, it does cool off a bit faster. I don't see that as a significant difference between the two stoves in any case. All right, I hope that that demonstration in this comparison gave you a bit of information if you're interested in purchasing either of these stoves. I will, of course, be pro providing the links to where you can purchase these stoves in the video description below, as well as the specs or the specifications I have for them as well. And as I mentioned in the opening, I will be doing another video where I'll be comparing these two stoves against the Fiber Maple gas pressure regulated stove, as well as providing a number of tips and or tricks that you can use with any of these stoves or any gas canister stove when it gets really cold. Basically, what I'm waiting for is it to get cold enough that I can do those demonstrations. All right, if you have any comments or any questions, please put them in the comment section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.